The most common type of forklift truck used in the UK is the counterbalance truck. As its name suggests, the weight of the truck counterbalances the load it is carrying and the design of the truck must allow for this to remain dynamically stable in any application it is used. It is important for operators to understand this principle as it's fundamental to safe operation and we will explore this later in the film. Counterbalance machines come in a huge range of sizes, from small three-wheeled electric trucks that lift around 1,000 kilograms to huge diesel container handlers that can lift over 40 tons. The main purpose of this film is to show new trainees how to operate a counterbalance forklift safely and efficiently, but it will also provide a useful reminder to experienced drivers of how it should be done properly. Everyone knows that to drive a car on the public roads in the UK you must pass a theory test to show that you understand the highway code and practical driving tests to demonstrate that you're competent as a driver and most importantly safe to yourself and other road users and pedestrians. There is similar legal requirement to train operators of forklifts. This was first established by the Health and Safety at Work Act in 1974 and has since been strengthened by subsequent legislation most notably the publishing of the approved code of practice for forklift operators by the Health and Safety Commission and the Pure and Lola regulations of 1998. In countries outside the UK, the specific legislation may differ, but the legal principles of protecting the safety of others will almost certainly be enshrined in law. Health and safety legislation imposes a duty upon employers to provide a safe working environment for their employees and any visitors to their site. It also imposes the legal responsibility upon employees to be active in maintaining a safe place to work for themselves and their fellow workers. Driving a forklift is a responsible job and as a professional you're responsible for the lives and limbs of the people you work with and as with any skill it starts with proper training. Safe operation of a forklift begins with making sure that the truck is safe and legal to use before you start. Generally known as pre-shift or pre-use checks, this function must be carried out by the operator at the beginning of each working day or shift. It's vital that the checks are done and just as important that the results are recorded by the operator in a clear and concise manner so that they can be retained for future reference. Remember, it is the legal responsibility of the operator to carry out the pre-use checks and of the employer to make sure that they are completed. So, what has to be checked? Well, it's best to start at the front of the truck, at the business end, the forks. We check for damage and signs of excessive wear. For example, one fork higher than the other, which will obviously bring problems entering a pallet. Or if the truck has been driven with the forks grounded, this can cause a dangerous thinning of the forks. The heels of the forks need to be checked for cracks and fractures, not forgetting of course the fork locating pins to make sure that they lock the forks into position. Finally, we must examine the carriage for damage which may prevent the forks either moving freely or locking into position. Moving on, the operator is now checking the lifting chains. A visual inspection is carried out to ensure that there are no bent links or damaged pins. The chain should be lightly greased with no evidence of rust. The chains are secured at the top of the mast and the bottom, normally behind the carriage. You should ensure that the locking nuts and split pins are in place and that they are secure. Let's move on and complete the checks to the mast. The carriage moves up and down the inner mast channels on steel rollers, so check these channels for signs of bright metal. This indicates that the rollers are rubbing the sides of the mast channel. This could be a sign of a twisting or distortion of the mast. In this case, it's so far, so good. The next step is to check the wheels and the tyres. Make sure all the wheel nuts are in place and are secure. In the case of pneumatic tyres, pressures need to be applied. If the tyres are solid or cushion type, the condition should be carefully checked as a large chunk out of the side wall could cause instability whilst travelling. Bits of metal, nails or screws or other foreign bodies should be removed from the tyre. 
If not removed, they could quickly cut up the surface again, causing damage that could affect the truck's stability. Just one more point before moving on. Occasionally, polythene or nylon banding can become wrapped or entangled around the wheel axle. If this is allowed to remain, it may well affect the steering of the truck, so check and clear. With electrically powered trucks, it may sometimes be necessary to take the truck off charge before carrying out your pre-use checks. When doing this, ensure that the charger is turned off at the mains and at the charger before disconnecting the battery. Disconnect the battery and store the charger cable away tidily. Don't leave it trailing across the floor, as this can lead to damage and could easily be a trip hazard. The general condition of the battery should be clean, dry and free from obvious damage, such as damage to cables and terminals. Notice that protective clothing consisting of goggles and rubber gloves are worn for these battery checks, vital as the batteries contain acid. There are a number of automatic checking and filling systems available for forklift batteries these days, particularly where there are large numbers of trucks in one location. These simplify and speed up the whole procedure. However, there is still the need to understand how batteries are maintained, which is by a random check of individual cells. The electrolyte levels are checked by lifting the caps on top of the battery cell. The electrolyte should just cover the top plate in the cell. Whilst checking batteries, make sure there are no naked lights and no smoking. There is a real risk of explosion. If, during the check, dry cells are found, then immediately before putting the truck on charge, the cell should be topped up with distilled water to the level recommended by the battery manufacturer. Do not overfill. If any electrolyte is spilt on your hands or face, wash it off immediately with water. It is important to remember that batteries are very costly items to replace, so they need to be checked daily and regularly maintained. This film features both gas, LPG and electric counterbalance trucks. However, just as common, particularly in outside applications, are diesel-powered machines, and it's the operator's responsibility to make sure that refuelling is done in accordance with recognised safe practice. The overhead load guard is checked to make sure it's secure, and where fitted, the vertical load guard, making sure it's secure and undamaged. All lift trucks are fitted with rated capacity plates like the one shown here. This is important because it contains information on the maximum weight that a machine will safely lift, both at a specified load centre and to a given height. It also shows what, if any, weight restrictions will apply at different lift heights. For this truck, we can lift a maximum load of 1,600 kilograms to a height of 4 metres at a load centre of 500 millimetres. It's important for the operator to know all this information so that they can operate safely and within the capacity of the truck. It is an offence to exceed the truck's rated capacity. Also shown on this plate is the load centre. On some trucks there may be a separate plate detailing this vital information. The importance of this will be explained in the next section on the principles of counterbalance. Suffice to say it shows the reduction in capacity of the truck if a longer load is lifted. As the name implies, the load centre is the distance measured from the heel of the forks to the centre of the load or the centre of gravity to the load and assumes that the load is evenly distributed. Take care when getting onto the truck. Face the seat and take a firm grip of the truck with both hands. Use the hand grips if fitted and place one foot up onto the truck, stepping onto the truck carefully. Since 2002, it has been a legal requirement in the UK that all counterbalance forklift trucks up to 10 tonne capacity are fitted with seat belts. As a standard rule, these should be worn at all times when operating the truck. Always check that the parking brake is applied. To start the truck, insert the key into the ignition and activate the battery isolator switch. After starting the truck, we need to check the hydraulic controls, the hoist, raising the mast and the forks to their full height, ensuring, of course, that there's sufficient overhead clearance. The operation should be smooth and steady with no sudden surges or harsh stops. The tilt is checked, both forward and back, again for smooth operation. And finally, any other attachments which may be fitted to your truck, such as side shift or any type of clamp. The remainder of the checks are mainly to do with moving and stopping the truck. The motive controls can be checked at the same time that we check the brakes. We need to make sure that the truck moves forward and in reverse smoothly. A 
and that the accelerator is regulating the speed correctly. You'll notice on this particular truck there are dual pedals, one for forwards and one for reverse. The truck that you operate may be lever control which requires manual selection of the gear direction. The brakes are checked in both directions to ensure that they stop the truck effectively and an emergency stop completed so that the operator is aware of how quickly the truck can be stopped. This will obviously have a bearing on driving speeds. To check the efficiency of the parking brake, it should be fully engaged. For this truck, the forward pedal is depressed in turn to ensure that the parking brake is working efficiently. If your truck is lever controlled, select forward gear and depress the accelerator gently. The parking brake should hold the truck in a stationary position. Repeat this exercise, but this time in reverse. Be careful not to apply too much pressure on the accelerator in case the surge of traction overcomes the efficiency of the brake or damages the truck motor and or control gear. Next, a series of manoeuvres are completed to check the steering. The truck should respond to the controlled movement of the steering wheel without undue tightness or looseness. The operator must check the horn to make sure it's working and can be heard. He also needs to check the gauges and the hydraulic unions for leaks. The best place to look for leaks is on the floor, after charging or a period of inactivity. Should there be a leak, this must be cleaned up at once, so take the appropriate steps that will be detailed in your company procedures. To dismount from the truck, remember to get off the truck safely, checking for any hazards such as other vehicles or slippery ground surface. Do not jump off the truck. Step down backwards, holding onto the truck with both hands, one foot at a time. Well, that completes the pre-shift checks. Although it may appear to have taken quite a considerable time, the experienced operator with a simple but efficient inspection system will only take four to five minutes once he gets into the routine. But for the operator, it is probably the most important few minutes of the day. Remember, don't forget to complete all the details in your inspection logbook. Any and all faults should be reported immediately to your supervisor and if the truck is unsafe, don't use it. As we explained at the beginning of this film, the name counterbalance forklift truck comes from the way that the weight of the truck counterbalances the load it's carrying. These diagrams should help you understand the principle involved. At its simplest, the counterbalance forklift is the same as a children's seesaw, with the front load wheel of the truck representing the pivot point or fulcrum of the seesaw. The weight of the truck on the left must exceed the weight of the load on the right otherwise the truck will tip forwards. In the diagram here we see that adding weight to the load will cause the truck to tip. Extending the load centre will produce the same result. In practice the forklift must have a high degree of safety margin built into it otherwise any rough ground, changes of direction or accelerating or braking would make the truck unstable. All counterbalance forklifts sold in the UK must conform to a strict capacity testing system which is internationally recognised. Therefore, provided the operator works within the capacity of the truck and operates correctly, the truck will always remain stable. The other significant factor affecting the stability of any forklift truck is the stability triangle. So what is it? Well, it's a line drawn between the centre of the two front wheels and the rear wheel, or on a four-wheel truck it will be the centre of the rear axle. As most of the weight of the truck is at the rear, the centre of gravity of an unladen truck is also well to the back of the truck. With the load, assuming that the load is evenly distributed, the centre of gravity of the load will be dead centre of the pallet. So when the truck picks up the laden pallet, these two load centres combine and become a single centre of gravity. The more central within the triangle that the combined centre of gravity is, the more stable the truck, and hence the reason that a laden counterbalanced truck is a more stable vehicle in the normal travel position than an unladen one. The other obvious factor that affects the stability triangle is height. As the load is elevated higher, 
Any movements of the truck or any sloping of the ground will have an exaggerated effect upon the combined centre of gravity and should the combined centre of gravity move outside the stability triangle, the truck will tip over. The higher a load is carried, the higher the centre of gravity will be and the more sensitive the truck will be to changes in direction. According to HSE statistics, turning with an elevated load causing the truck to tip over is the biggest single cause of fatalities in lift truck accidents in the UK. Don't do it. So, we've looked at what you shouldn't do. What's the correct way to travel safely with your counterbalance forklift? The answer is simple and obvious. Travel in a straight line whenever possible and when cornering, do so carefully and at a reduced speed. Always stick to even ground, with the load being carried as low as practically possible. The pallet should be in contact with the fork heels and stabilising back tilt applied to support the load. That's it. It's common sense and if you always operate this way, you'll be efficient, productive and safe. And just as important, so will your colleagues around you. We've already shown you the effect on stability of operating on an incline, but sometimes it's inevitable and you'll need to drive up or down an incline. Again, the rule is simple. If the truck is laden, the forks or load must face uphill. If the truck is empty, the forks must face downhill. And in either case, remember these rules. Drive slowly and use the brakes gently. Always drive directly up or down. Never across the diagonal and never turn on an incline. Keep the forks as low as possible, which reduces the center of gravity and applies stabilizing back tilt. If when traveling uphill laden, your view is obscured, then use a banksman to provide guidance and always look in the direction of travel. So far, we've concentrated on how to safely travel with your counterbalance forklift. The other main function of the machine is obviously to lift and stack goods. So before we go ahead and start lifting, we need to be able to judge what we can and can't lift. Firstly, what about the weight? We've already looked at what the capacity of the truck is, so we need to be sure that the weight of the load is within the capabilities of the truck. Is the load centre OK? What about the condition of the pallet and the load that sits on it? Are they in good condition? And is the load secure? Or is there a danger of items falling off when it's being moved? Is the size of the load a problem? Will it affect visibility or not fit through doorways? And finally, will the forks properly support the load and not protrude beyond the end of the pallet? This can be dangerous and cause significant damage to goods when lifting or lowering. So we've assessed our load and it's OK. What we need to do now is to pick it up and place it in the racking. For ease of understanding and remembering, we've broken the procedure down into an eight-step cycle, starting with step one. Slowly enter the pallet with the forks until the rear of the load butts up to the front face of the forks. Apply the parking brake, and if your truck is lever-controlled, select neutral. And then lift clear of the ground so that the base of the load is about 150 millimetres or six inches clear of the floor apply back tilt. Nestle the load against the backrest to make it more secure. Release the parking brake and depress forward gear. With lever control trucks engage forward gear and then release the parking brake and move off after checking all around that it's safe to do so. Approach the designated stacking location in the safe travel position that we saw a moment ago and when the front wheel is adjacent to the actual stacking location, turn through 90 degrees to face the location. Stop with the front of the load 150 millimeters or 6 inches from the racking or bolt stacking location and centrally positioned. Apply the parking brake and select neutral. Step 2. Using the tilt function, level the forks. It's easier to judge that the load is level at this point rather than when it's high in the air. Step 3. Check overhead to make sure there is clear headroom before lifting and then lift the load to the point where the bottom of the pallet is 50 to 75 millimetres, that's 2 to 3 inches, above the racking beam. It's also good practice to check the level of the load or forks again while at eye level. Step 4. 
Select forwards, check all around that it's clear and then release the parking brake. Move forwards gently, making any small steering adjustments to accurately position the pallet squarely in its intended location, making sure that the mast doesn't come into contact with the racking. Remember to position the pallet correctly with a 50 to 75 mm safety gap on each side of the load and if stacking in racking then allow the pallet to overhang the front of the racking by 25 to 50 mm that's 1 to 2 inches in imperial measurements. If bulk stacking then the rules are slightly different. You must make sure that the load is exactly on top of the load below it so that the stack is perfectly upright and level and the load evenly distributed. Apply the parking brake and select neutral. Step 5. Lower the load smoothly and carefully into position, checking that the safety gap is being maintained. Once the load is safely in position and supported by the racking, or in the case of bulk stacking, the load beneath it, then lower the forks so that they can be safely withdrawn from the pallet without fouling on withdrawal. Select reverse, look carefully around, and if all is clear, release the parking brake. Step 6. Reverse away, looking in the direction of travel with occasional checks to make sure the forks are withdrawing cleanly from the pallet. If you do need to adjust the forks to ensure a clean withdrawal, then stop and apply the parking brake and select neutral before making the necessary adjustment. Once the fork tips are 150mm clear of the pallet, stop, apply the parking brake and select neutral. Step 7. Lower the forks under control. And finally, step 8. Set the forks into the safe travel position. The cycle is complete and it's on to the next task. Now to de-stack, which is a reversal of the stacking cycle. Again, we have broken this down into an 8-step process to help understanding. Step 1. Approach the pallet to be de-stacked in the safe travel position. Turn through 90 degrees to face the location. Stop with the fork tips 150 mm from the racking or bulk stack and centrally positioned. Apply the parking brake and select neutral. Step 2. Level the forks. Step 3. Check overhead that there are no obstructions and then lift the forks to the correct height so that the forks can enter the pallet cleanly. Step 4. Select forward, release the parking brake after carefully checking all around and then move slowly forwards making any slight steering adjustments to make sure that the load when lifted will be central on the forks and snugly against the front face of the forks. Check that the mast doesn't make contact with the racking or stack. Apply the parking brake and select neutral. Step 5. Check above to make sure that there is enough clear headroom before lifting and pay particular attention that the load backrest cannot foul on the racking or roof. Lift the pallet 50 to 75 millimetres. If at this point the mast or forks dip forward as the weight is taken, then adjust the back tilt so that the load will be level as it's withdrawn. Step 6. Select reverse and look carefully around before releasing the parking brake and reversing away. Look in the direction of travel, but keep checking that the load is withdrawing cleanly and not rubbing on the racking or adjacent loads. When the load is clear of the racking by 150 mm, stop, apply the parking brake and select neutral. Step 7. Lower the load under control until it's about 150 mm above the ground. Step 8. Apply back tilt and you're in the safe travel position and ready to transport the load to its destination. Today, most of the loads you'll come across will be on wooden pallets and will normally be stacked either in racking or bulk stacked. You'll also need to be aware that there are other types of pallets and methods of stacking, the commonest being what are known as corner post pallets or stillages. These pallets have receiving cups which allow them to stack safely on top of each other and they require great accuracy from the lift truck operator in positioning their truck to stack and de-stack them. There will be a limit placed on how high these can be stacked depending upon their design and it's important that you know what this limit is before stacking. 
An important safety tip when handling corner post pallets is to travel with even greater care. Corner post pallets are almost always made of metal and the lack of friction between the base of these and the forks of the lift truck means that harsh braking can easily cause the load to slide off the forks. Watch out! Loading and unloading of a lorry or a vehicle is something that as a forklift truck operator you'll become very familiar with. There are a number of general rules that you must stick to in order to ensure the safety of yourself, others, the load and the vehicle. Firstly, ensure the vehicle is parked correctly with the brakes on and the ignition switched off. Some site regulations may require the wheels of the lorry to be chocked. Familiarise yourself with the rules and regulations of your site. It's important that you ensure there is suitable access available down both sides of the vehicle and that it's positioned on good, firm and level ground. Finally, make certain that the vehicle bed is free of debris and is sufficiently strong enough to take the load. Once these checks are complete, you're ready to start your task of loading or unloading the vehicle. Ensure the driver is aware that you're about to start operating and that they're in a position of safety. Loading should normally start at the front of the vehicle and work backwards on alternate sides to ensure vehicle stability and balance. The pallet should be loaded and unloaded using the same techniques used as for stacking and destacking within a racking system. Take care not to hit the vehicle with the forklift truck. There is a bit of a problem with this load as you can see. The operator has driven forward as far as possible into the pallet but the forks have not fully penetrated. Let's see how he handles this situation. Remember, airspace between the load and the vertical face of the forks will reduce the truck's lifting capacity and could cause it to tip over. So far, so good. The load is raised gently just a little way clear of the lorry floor and the truck is reversed back a little way. Now the load is deposited back on the lorry bed. The truck is driven forward to fully penetrate the pallet, eliminating that dangerous gap. With the load safely on the forks, the unloading manoeuvre is completed, an example of good driving skills. We've now completed the methods for loading and unloading of vehicles. This should be covered in greater depth during your training course. It's important that at the end of your working day or shift, you make sure that you leave your truck parked in a safe position. Your site will normally have a designated area for parking up trucks once operation is complete. Familiarise yourself with the rules and regulations of your site and ensure that your truck is never left in an unsafe position. This film has covered the basics of safe operation of a counterbalance forklift truck. It has been designed as a training aid to help operators understand how to operate safely and efficiently. All operators of forklift trucks should be properly trained by an accredited trainer. To become a safe and efficient operator, you must remember your training and apply this in your everyday work. Remember these golden rules. Always concentrate on what you're doing. Look carefully around before moving off and look in the direction of travel. Always look up when lifting the mast and always make sure you have sufficient overhead clearance for doorways, pipes, lights and cables. Remember the rear end swing when operating the truck. You know, but not everyone around you may be so careful. When approaching a blind corner, slow down, manoeuvre slowly, be prepared to stop and sound the horn to let others know you're there. Always stay in control, keep one hand on the steering wheel, Travel at a speed suited to the conditions and avoid making sharp turns or sudden stops. If you come across debris on the floor, don't drive over it. Stop, park safely and remove it. The next driver may not spot it, resulting in an accident. Always take care of yourself. Never allow any part of your body to stick out from the safety of the cab and when mounting and dismounting the truck, use the three points of contact rule. Face the truck and use the hand grips and steps provided. Look all around for hazards and don't jump. 
Every year in the UK, there are thousands of reportable accidents involving forklift trucks, many of them very serious and several resulting in fatalities. Accidents don't just happen. They're caused by things like operator error, inadequate supervision, doing things too fast, ground and working conditions, poor equipment condition or complacency. Remember the message in this film and your training. Be safe, look after yourself and everything around you.